No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. And welcome back once again to The Horror Show with Brian Keene, brought to you by the Project Entertainment Network, available for free, always free, on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and all other platforms. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Keene. We have a full house today. We have one, two, three, four co-hosts. We're only missing two other co-hosts. <laughs> um, first of all, Mr. Dave. Hello. Mary. Hi there. Mike Lombardo's replacement, Matt, back hey, in the what's house. what's going on? <laughs> and, and speaking of Mike Lombardo, Horror Syndicate left you, let you off this week? Well, we record on Fridays, Brian. Oh, you record on Fridays? Because <laughs> you don't want to go up against us on Thursday nights? Um, actually, I just work later on fr Thursday nights, so... <laughs> They found that the, the random drunken homeless guys who accidentally tune in the show, most of them are awake on Fridays. That's what they do Friday. Now, now, Matt, what is it like for you sitting next to the guy that, that you replaced on the show? Oh, I'm Kurt. kind of intimidated. He, kind of a, he, he is an intimidating person. I got to say, you can't cut the sexual tension in here with a knife. <laughs> and it's, yeah. I tried earlier. And that sexual tension is brought to you by artist <laughs> Chris Enterline. <laughs> Who paid oh, money boy, to sponsor that that sexual tension? <laughs> oh, uh, if you're looking for some amazing, original, handcrafted artwork for your next project, be it a cover for the book that you've been writing, or paintings for the tabletop game that you're developing, huh. or drawings for the comic book you're you're working on, whatever you need. If you need an artist, Chris Anterline has you covered. He'll work with you to craft eye-catching work that will definitely help you get the attention you're looking for. His work's been featured in Clickers Forever, a tribute to J.F. Gonzalez. <clears throat> He's worked with some real talent, authors like... <laughs> No it's just the way he said it. It's like he's worked. With, he's worked with. He's done clickers, and then he's worked with real talent. Yeah, he worked with. He worked Jeez, with me. You scared the shit out of me. That's, that's it was like all ad, nice and somber. That's and how the ad copy <laughs> was written. Lord, what was that, sound? <laughs> that was my Mary laughing impression. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was like a bird exploding. <laughs> Les Nesman threw the turkeys out of the helicopter didn't sound that bad. I'm going to have to redo my whole top ten favorites moments mm. of the year list because this is going in. The it's exploding a... bird. Do yeah, he's again. He's... I don't know if I can recreate that again. I don't think a human voice, like, that's like one of the sounds a human body shouldn't be able to make. <laughs> like, seriously, it's like... <laughs> Adam Cesare, John Bowden, Patrick Lacey, <laughs> just a few of the real talent, the real talent he's, that he's worked, worked with. with. Um, he's also done limited edition covers for Thunderstorm Books, uh, an alternate movie poster for Mike Lombardo's I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday, which we're going to talk about later That's on the show. Very nice. um, so yeah, Chris is available. <laughs> okay, if, if 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 you need an artist, he's your guy. Uh, email him at chrisenterline at gmail dot com. That's Chris C H R I S Enterline E N T E R L I N E. Or you can find him on Instagram at Enterline Draws, and of course his website chrisenterline dot com. If uh, you'd like to see what he can do, he can maybe draw a bird exploding. <laughs> I gotta say, I've worked with Chris a lot, and uh, he is fucking fantastic. So. I, uh, I concur. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Yeah. On a completely yeah. serious yeah. note, he has done a lot of stuff for me, and he is intimidatingly talented. Yeah, cute absolutely. as a button too. <laughs> <laughs> That's that uh, sexual tension. There's that, that he, sexual he tension. Paid <laughs> for. What I I found fascinating about Chris is you know he, he does illustration, but he just recently, and I mean in the last couple of weeks, has taken up 3D modeling. 
Yeah. Oh yes, I've and seen that. And he's been working yeah. on a Frankenstein. Yes. that's unbelievable. Yes, because I used to do that for a living, and I'm like, dude, because he like did like a it was a donut, a cup of coffee, and he's like, oh, it was the first thing I ever did. I'm like, that's really impressive. Yeah, like he's he's taken to it, so he's exceptionally that's talented. Awesome. Yeah, his, yeah, his he, stuff. He I work a, with him on projects too. He's he's amazing. So. He does a donut and a cup of coffee, and then the next day he has a completely fully anatomically correct like seven foot Frankenstein. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> son of a bitch. I know. He's like, well, this That's is a hell look- of a jump. <laughs> he's like, well, this doesn't look that good. I'm like, oh no, this looks amazing. Well, there you yeah. go, Matt. If you need yeah. a cover artist for your next book, hey, speaking of which, yeah, you have some news as well. I do. My first book. In a long time, is finally out. You can grab it at lulu.com, L U L U dot com, uh, nine ninety nine. Edge of Twilight. Yeah, it's a, it's a collection of four short horror stories dealing with cosmic wonders, monsters, mysteries, Woo-hoo! and the demons of real life. Now, did you did you publish it as Matt Wilson or Matthew Wilson? Matt or? Wilson. Matt Wilson. Yep. And it's the Edge of Twilight. The Edge of Twilight. There's no shiny on. Uh, no, no shiny vampires. No, it has okay. nothing to do with that whatsoever. Now, are no, you gonna... <laughs> sold for a second? But now... Are you going to put oh, it on my... like? Are you going to put it on like Kindle and stuff too, or is it going to be Lulu exclusive? I have an ebook version of that out there that's on Smashwords that okay. should be distributed to all that stuff by now. Hopefully, it is. Oh, they right. always uh, screw me over somehow. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go, listeners. Pick that up. Um, all right. As I said, later in the show, we're going to talk about I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday. It's here. It's available now on Blu-ray and DVD. And as a special treat, of course, Doomsday, one of its stars is 10-year-old Reeve Blasey. Um, And one of the hosts of this show (laughs) is 10-year-old Dungeon Master 77.1. So we thought it would be fun to let one 10-year-old interview another 10-year-old. You know, both of them have have adults in their life who are involved in this industry. So we, we thought it might be a unique interview. And it was. It was indeed a unique <laughs> interview. Um, so what? It, what's the runtime on that day? About 10 minutes? It's like nine minutes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, because they're 10. They, yeah, they, they lost interest. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what happened. <laughs> but yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. Um, but before we do that, we, uh, we should get to the news. There's only one news story this week, and that is, of course, Matt, can you guess what it is? Stanley. Stanley. Yeah. That's right. Um now I talked about Stanley a lot on this week's episode of Defender's Dialogue. Um I don't know how much of that I need to recap. Uh I mean you you look at at creatives, filmmakers, yeah. authors, video game makers, etc. I can't think of anybody who's made more of a worldwide cultural impact. Then Stan Lee and, of course, his co-creators, Jack Kirby, yep. Steve Ditko, Larry Lieber, uh, who was his brother. Um, right. You know, we, we talk so much about mythology, okay? But I, I told this story in Defender's Dialogue. I can remember in 1986 in the Navy, and we pull into Kenya, okay? And Kenya mm-hmm. at that time was just a desolate country. It's ravaged by AIDS, ravaged by poverty. Literally, there are people living in mud huts. Right. And yet I met this little boy who had a Captain America shirt on. And the only words of English he knew were Captain America. He kept calling me Captain America the whole oh, time we were there. Um, that's that's a mythology, okay? That's something that, that transcends culture, transcends economics, transcends religion. Right. Um, you can't go anywhere on planet Earth and not find somebody that's not familiar with these characters. Absolutely. Um you know, and and re- regardless of whether you're a fan like like Dave and Matt and myself, or or whether you're not a fan like Lombardo, um, or whether you've just become a fan through the movies like Mary, um, the you cannot deny their lasting power. I you know, how many eons later we're still talking about Greek mythology, Roman yeah. mythology, Norse mythology? I absolutely 100 percent believe. <gasps> these characters have that same staying power. Oh yeah, they'll be around. Two thousand yeah. years from now, they'll still be a Tony Stark. They'll still be a Peter Parker. Yep, and that's remarkable. Um, so like I said, you know, I I talked about it a lot. Um, the only thing we didn't, Chris and I didn't cover because Defenders Dialogue is a much lighter show. We didn't get into Stanley's final years. Um, right. You know, of course we we've talked about on this show all the. The allegations of elder abuse at the hands of Kia Morgan, uh, who allegedly had isolated Lee from his friends and associates, 
following his wife's death in some harebrained scheme to, you know, get his hands on Stan Lee's wealth. Uh, I mean, you know, he was worth $50 million, estimated. Um, luckily, that was resolved, and Stan Lee's final months were, yeah. we, we assume, much happier, much better. But, uh, yeah, he passed away November 12th. Dave, Matt, I, I know you guys will have things you'll want to say about Stan Lee. Uh, Mary, I don't know about you. Lombardo, keep it clean. We know how you feel about <laughs> about Marvel characters. I got, I got nothing. I got nothing against Stan Lee. The man, the man had more influence on things than I ever will in my life, and I respect that. So, even though I'm not a fan of the comics, you know, he's a cool dude. All right. Well, who wants to start? If you want to go, Dave, you can. Go. I mean, yeah. I I'm not sure what to say that hasn't already been said, but um. I don't remember how old I was, but I remember, uh, I think the first Stan Lee work I ever saw was Fantastic Four comic book, uh, and it was the combination of, of his writing and Jack Kirby's art, which Jack Kirby's still probably my all-time favorite artist, right? Uh, you know, and just, I think it might have been the Galactus storyline. Ooh, yeah. that first appearance? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't remember. I just I remember reading that as a kid. I don't know if it was the first one I ever read or not, or, or it might have been Doctor Doom, but in any event... I was just like blown away by like the imagination. You know, it was just like these are really cool characters, and like you know, Galactus, the idea that a guy eats planets to live. I mean, it's just yeah, he's the big purple guy. Yeah, right? the big purple yeah, guy. Yeah, that's where the Silver okay. Surfer shows up. You know, it's Mary's no, that's Gorilla Grodd. Mar- <laughs> Mary's <laughs> favorite I'm thinking of is, is whichever Grimace. Yeah, I was going to say thinking of Grimace. Whichever MCU movie we take her to, or whatever toy Dungeon Master is playing with, that's that's her frame of reference. Her uh, yeah, favorite. absolutely. And I well, often have to ask Dungeon Master. Is this guy a good guy or a bad guy? And then he clarifies, and at least I have that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's which, so. which series was the Hamburglar in? <laughs> <laughs> that might have been <laughs> the Jesus. early Avengers. Mm. The Hamburglar. He was one of the original members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the <Hamburglar>. Yes. <laughs> Under oh, Brian Michael Bendis, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not too far. Uh, <laughs> and there was a 22-page scene of the Hamburglar eating breakfast. <laughs> eating hamburgers for breakfast. Not funny. It's, a, it's in sepia tone. I can see it now. <laughs> Bendis, we love you. You know we tease. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so, Dave. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I was a fan. I was more of a Marvel fan than a DC fan as a kid. Um, even now, actually. Although I, I pretty much don't read comics now. But, uh, you know, then and then, of course, I mean, my favorite character is uh the hulk because i always identified with the hulk because the hulk just wanted to be left alone the difference between me and the hulk is the hulk could pick up a battleship and throw it at somebody i could not do that unfortunately because i always wanted would if yeah you could. oh oh please please the hulk is totally the hulk is me because it's just like leave hulk alone and i'm like yes yes leave me alone too people just, just leave me alone. so i identify with the hulk greatly but like i said i couldn't like throw tanks around or anything so but uh i always enjoyed that like the hulk would just you know, you'd think they would not like, they get the hint like maybe not to send tanks after him after like the 10th time he picks one up and throws it at him you know <laughs> you might want to like i don't know get something heavier i don't know but uh that and uh you know the thor the original Thor stuff was good. It's just in general, I wasn't as much of a Spider-Man fan as a kid. Um, Spider-Man was like later in life, I appreciated it more than when, yeah. when I was young, yeah. which I think, you know, it's just because of the character <clears throat> and stuff. But uh, anyway, again, I always say there's certain people that I wouldn't be doing today what I do without them, and uh, Stan Lee's definitely one. There's no doubt about it. Now, I know there's controversy about, you know, what did he create and who did he rip off and stuff like that. I, I'm not going to get into that, you know. I, I just The guy deserves all the credit. For coming up with, like you well, said, a mythos you know, that's going to endure long past when Chris, you know, Chris and I talked about that yeah. on, on Defenders Dialogue. You know, yeah, Stanley did not create these things alone. Jack right. Kirby, Steve Ditko, Larry yeah. Lieber all had a hand in it. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I use this analogy on Defenders Dialogue, and I'll use it here. Imagine if comics was Van Halen. Okay, the band Van Halen is named after <clears throat> brothers Eddie and Alex, the right. drummer and the guitar player. But who's the front man? Who's the guy doing all the interviews? Who's the guy at the front of the stage? Who's the the huckster out there shilling the band? David Lee Roth. Yeah. Stan Lee was the David Lee Roth. Sure. From yeah. Marvel Comics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he he was he was the pitchman. He mm-hmm. was he was uh, Barnum at the circus. And yeah, all the other performers, the circus falls apart without them. But it's the it's the ringmaster that that you pay attention to. Um. 
you know, and and you know, no offense against Steve <clears throat> Ditko or Jack Kirby, I I love them both, but you know, Steve Ditko notoriously reclusive. Mm-hmm. Jack Kirby just wanted to chomp his cigars and draw shit, and and had all these big ideas. He didn't want to be out there shilling either, so right. it fell on Stan to do it. Mm-hmm. But Matt, what about you? Well, I am the <laughs> Spider Man fan. <laughs> um, I I. I got into Spider-Man so much when I was a kid because, I mean, like, what kid that read comics didn't kind of, like, coincide with Spider-Man in a right. sense? Like, I felt he was a brilliant character because you wrote something that you could relate to. He was just, like, a guy that was thrown into this situation. You know, he wasn't, he didn't ask to be super. It just happened to him. And he decided to do the better thing than to just, like, squander it for himself. But he also had to deal with life, girlfriends, school, you know, I had to get a job and all this stuff. And that's things that, like, at the time, I was going through in life. And every kid could kind of, like, they could get behind that. Because they're like, I have problems on my own, too. You know, I'm not a Spider-Man. I can't use that to get out of it. But at the same time, like, yeah, I failed my test. I like this girl. I'm afraid to talk to her. You know, I got to go get a job. I don't want to work. You know, it, it was just, I loved that character. Uh, in the recent years, I don't think they did it so well. But <laughs> when he when he started having, like, billions of dollars and... Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Dan Slott. And yeah. We said about that. That's better. when I got away from comics for a while. Dan but... Slott hate listens to this show. Yeah. I've been told. Does he? I've oh, been okay. told. So, uh, yeah. He's still downloading Hi, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, other than Spider-Man, though, like, every character that those guys created back then like if they didn't do that marvel wouldn't even be here no and we'd be like we'd probably still have dc around i would assume but like not having those marvel characters i feel like we th- this whole world that we live in right now would not be the same that it is right I now absolutely mm-hmm. agree um it, you know and you think it's just paper and some words and some drawings and you think like how does this have that big of an impact but it does it did it was the it was the first franchise. You know, now we live in a world with all these franchise fandoms. Everything from Star Trek to Evil yeah. Dead. Everything has a, a franchise and a fandom yeah. built behind it. We wouldn't have that had had Stan Lee not pushed Marvel, you know, going to college campuses in the 60s and 70s pushing them as something not for little kids but hey this is something college and that is how he did it it was like a grassroots approach that he took to it exactly yeah and nobody else was doing that at the time for that kind of stuff for me it was always it was it was iron man um he wasn't the first really (laughs) he wasn't the first marvel comic i read the you know the first two i read were uh uh, defenders and uh uh the hell else was it captain america jack kirby's mm-hmm. during the mad bomb thing but yeah i picked up captain marvel 50 i think written by our friend scott edelman <laughs> and here's this guy iron man and then i, I bought an iron man comic and mm-hmm. you know here's a guy who he doesn't have to worry if people tell him he's not allowed to do something he just fucking does it yeah, just, you know yeah. and he's got this he, he's got no superpowers but he's got this fucking suit of armor so people can't hurt him that that appealed to me yeah. as a kid, you know. Fuck you, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm Iron Man. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I dug that, you know. And it was smart enough to get away with it, which I yeah. would imagine would also appeal to young Brian. Well, yeah, it wasn't just <laughs> even back in the '70s. It wasn't just hey, I'll use this new suit of armor to get out. You know, he used right. his brain. Right. Um, I mean, there's still there's still a a a superior or exceptional quality even to the superheroes that don't have a superpower. Right. So, yep. So Stan Lee dead at the age of ninety five. What a what an incredible run. Yeah. Um. You know. I now I understand. I I I know he was Jewish. I recognize he was Jewish. I'm not disparaging anyone's religion. Okay. But in, in my mind, I I like to picture the the pearly gates, which is not <laughs> is not something I believe in either. For the record, but for this analogy, no, I get what I, you're saying. Yeah, I feel the I, same I, way. I like yeah. to picture the pearly gates and Saint. Who's the Catholic saint? Uh, I think St. Peter's. Okay, St. Peter's there, and Stan Lee arrives at the Pearly Gates, and uh, he's just, you know, he's just, uh, he's Stan Lee Lieber at that moment, <laughs> and then he sees the line, and he gets in line, and when he gets up there, he puts the sunglasses on, and St. <laughs> Peter says, your name? Hey, true believer, this yeah. is Stan Lee, Excelsior, <laughs> you know. There's already been, you know, since the internet is the wonderful thing that it is, there's already been memes about stuff like that already. Is like, it really? They had one like, uh, 
Uh, this just in from heaven. Uh, Stanley not impressed with God's powers. <laughs> 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 All right, that's fine. Oh nice. wow! Wow! I mean, you got to give credit to a guy who whose creations people like me knew long before we'd ever even heard the name Stanley. So there, there's something kind of impressive about that. Well, exactly. You know? Yeah. You know. And, and I'm along with you. Like, if you believe in the whole idea of like, you know, we're all going to be together after we all die up in heaven or whatever. Like, if that's what you believe, then that's cool. But I, I hope you know. If that's what it is, he's up there with his wife now. Oh, absolutely. They can finally be together his, again. His wife Aww. and maybe maybe Jack Kirby's there with a cigar. Oh, yeah, maybe they're up there writing if, all new stuff. I wonder, if right. heaven, I wonder if heaven is no smoking. Do they have a smoking? I would have to, I, think I would have to imagine they create smoke, a smoking section smoking just section. for Jack Kirby. I mean, yeah. it is all clouds and stuff. So. That's true. <laughs> well, they can, always, they can always retcon heaven. <laughs> so. right up there. They it's can retcon me. heaven. Yeah. <laughs> retcon, you know. Eternity is a long time. We got to keep it going. You yeah, know? yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus! So we got to get there before Dan Slot dies and gets his hands on it. Then. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, collective suicide right now. <laughs> this is why I'm on the horror syndicate now. <laughs> I'll go and make the horror the cool show way. has gone horribly, horribly well, wrong. All religious stuff. I am not a true believer. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Excelsior to you anyway. Yeah, Excelsior. What cracks me up is, is Brian talking about heaven and pearly gates. He's like, what's that guy's name? And I'm like, this is the wrong room to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guy's name? You know, that guy. The guy, like, so, people in a gate, I don't Peter know. Peter Gabriel, I think it was, <laughs> right? St. <Saint> Peter Gabriel. <laughs> with, with a boom box up over yeah. his head like John Cusack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, they were betrayed by Judas Priest. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you know. Was it oh, wasn't it the thing that Urbanting invented that we were trying to convince Mary's we were like a Christmas goose or something, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, the Christmas seal. The Christmas, the Christmas seal. seal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Christmas seal. Maybe the Christmas seal's there. Yeah. Is, is that where baloney comes from? <laughs> yes. Starring exactly. start Don Nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the road trip Mary and Lombardo and I took to scares the care and Lombardo and I absolutely one hundred percent one hundred percent convinced her there was a train robbery movie starring Ice T, Ice Cube, and Don Knotts as the conductor. <laughs> I hate you all. She and believed Don it. Uh, okay. Who wouldn't watch and that? And Don Knotts at the end got to say, I'm going to bust a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I so hope we get to the pearly gates that Don Knotts and Rush pee in your shoes. Hey, you oh. know what? Don Put Knotts, all the money in the Don bag, Don Knotts, asshole. a fellow West Virginia boy, he he's welcome to pee in my shoes. <laughs> Don Knotts pee in your shoes. I'd pay wait. money for a golden wait, shower wait, from wait, Don wait. Knotts. I, Whoa. <laughs> What just I, happened to you? I did, but it was a Don Knotts impersonator. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a top ten list, but it's growing. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I just, I, I just added something to mine. But it, now, let's see, now you've opened a whole door here. Um, <laughs> so you, you, you said something. What did you say? Like, like I pay West money Virginia. to have Don Knotts. Well, but be, because be he's from me? West Virginia. Yeah, he's a so he's does a, that he's mean a homeboy. Anybody from West Virginia? Appreciates the fact that someone else from West Virginia pees in their shoes. No, sure. no, it depends. No, it, you the, have to be West Virginia thing. proud. Like if you're, uh, if you're Robert Byrd, who of course was an, uh, a proud ex Klansman <laughs> who stayed in our government up until what the nineties. Yeah, pretty much. No, yeah. fuck that guy. Okay. His okay. pee is worthless. Is, yeah. <laughs> pee on him. Pee so on that asshole. There's a pee chart. There's a pee chart. There's but, a pee hierarchy. Yeah. You know, well, if you're, I don't know, Brian. <laughs> Brian Hatcher or Michael Nost or Don uh, Knotts, and you did the state proud, then yeah, you should be allowed to pee on people. Yeah, they've got, I should be allowed yeah, to you've pee got on like people. Don Knotts, R. Kelly, you know, the whole the whole hierarchy. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, at some point when I have nothing better to do in the time, I'm going to go back through the show archives and cut out all of Brian's pee references <laughs> and see how long it would take to listen to all of them. Because I'm thinking, it's like at this point, it's like a the good three hours. Yeah, the golden, yeah, the golden oldies. Yeah, the golden oldies. Yeah, the golden oldies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> Mary, you're on fucking fire today. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is our oh my God. the next time we need a break, that's our best of. Brian's golden oldies. <laughs> I broke him. <laughs> Mary, I think he's gonna I, piss himself. I have I have two microphones. You need to slip Not in two now. turntables, two microphones. What's fascinating, he's going to piss himself. He better piss in a bottle to save that West Virginia pee for somebody. <laughs> if you go to a convenience store in West Virginia, they have bottles of pee in case it's an emergency. You need some West Virginia pee to pour over your head. <laughs> pour one out for my hobbies. Oh. 
Now you know what we make that moonshine from. Um, no. Good <laughs> yeah. lord. This moonshine commentary, once dead. again, was brought to you by artist Chris Enterline. <laughs> <laughs> You can check out his work at chrisenterline.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-E-N-T-E-R-L-I-N-E.com. Or if you're ready to hire him after that, just send him an email at chrisenterline at gmail.com. Maybe he can uh, make a print of me peeing on Mars. He's going to get the weirdest fucking request now for art. It's not even funny. Um, He has an impressively heavy stream. Yes. I have can I you, have urinated next to him at conventions. Can you can you draw a picture of Ob peeing on a conqueror worm and, <laughs> in West Virginia? <laughs> so, Mr. Lombardo, yes, Mr. welcome back to the show. It's good to be here. Uh, yeah, everything has changed for you since the last time you were on. I guess you could say that. Um, I mean, you know, we've we've talked about Doomsday on the show. You've been on the show talking about Doomsday, but now it's a reality. Now it's mm-hmm. not even the film festival circuit anymore. Now it's it's Blu-ray, it's DVD, it's VHS, it's VHS. That's right, limited edition VHS. Yeah. Which here's what I don't understand with the distributor: <laughs> limited edition VHS. It's VHS. You can just make more. Right. Well, you can't see the thing with the VHS, and it kind of sucks because we got a little, we got the shaft on this one because. Um, the big thing in the collector's market is colored VHS tapes. Like they have like green ones, blue ones, whatever. Oh, okay. They stopped making VHS tapes about 20 years ago. So all that's left is what's sitting in warehouses somewhere. So they are becoming harder and harder to find. And really? the colored VHS tapes are damn near impossible to find. Oh, interesting. And Bong of the Living Dead, the preview, the movie that just came out from Scream Team before Doomsday, they got the last batch of green tapes. <laughs> Which, I mean, honestly, I would have preferred red anyway, but they are so fucking hard to find, and we could not find one, so they're just standard shitty black tapes, you know? Like, <laughs> so is this like generic the new record VHS. thing, where people want to collect I guess. VHS? I mean, honestly, the VHS collector's market is a strange thing. Um, I grew up on VHS. I was a VHS kid. I right, collect right. old VHS tapes of my favorite movies, but I do not... I would not, and this is probably not the best thing to say for sales, but I wouldn't buy a VHS tape of <laughs> a new movie. I think that's kind of odd, but y- yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not excited as hell to have it sitting on my shelf, because I think it's really cool. I don't know if I have if I have the, uh, what was the, the fortitude is not the right word. I don't know if my ego, my ego can handle watching this movie on VHS on a CRT TV, because I think that I would probably die looking at how bad it's going to look. <laughs> Um, but I mean, it's definitely cool. We want to, we spent a lot of time designing the VHS artwork for it too. I based it on a lot of the, the big thing is to do the, uh, eighties distressed looks. It looks like an old tape you find at the right, video store. Right. I want the polar opposite of that. I wanted to go clean nineties because I feel like doomsday is the kind of movie, not that you would find it like mom and pop video shop in the exploitation section, but something you would go to the theater and see and be like, Oh, I'm going to go buy Jurassic park. And it right. just happens to be the only format it's available on his video. So we did like a 90s cover or a 90s back. So there's uh, red strokes around each of the three pictures, which are bizarrely overlapping slightly because that's what they always did. That's and right. Cool. That's awesome. Everything, it looks exactly like a 90s VHS tape. So it's kind of different, I think. And 90s nostalgia is about to kick off in a big way. So yeah, yeah. we're yeah. ahead of the curve. Yeah. Well, we were saying the other day, actually, that um, it's, it's interesting how many like indie horror movies that we're seeing coming out now... <laughs> That have uh, like old technology, like tape recorders or oh, you yeah. know phones with the big you know curly cords and yeah. like, you know rotary phones and um, and there's no explanation for it. There's no explanation as to why like that technology is there as opposed to you know iTunes or something. Or oh, I think <laughs> that it's, cell phones. It doesn't create a timeless feel. That doesn't make any sense because you're obviously dating uh, your movie, right? But- it's, uh, I mean, these filmmakers, it's what they grew up with. Like, Doomsday is unofficially set in the 90s. Everything in the movie is 90s tech. Right. Doesn't really affect anything in the movie. I mean, right. if they had cell phones and like Doomsday, it wouldn't make a damn difference. Exactly. The story would be exactly yeah. the same. But Even down to the action figure. Even yeah. the action figure right. has a 90s look. Right. You know? Yeah, it is a 90s. It's a, yeah. it's a Toxic Crusader awesome. toy. I wanted Ninja Turtles, but there's no way in hell I would have gotten permission to do that, so... Uncle Lloydy stepped in. And, uh, <laughs> Uncle Lloydy. He, uh, he let me use that, uh, but... Yeah, I mean it's just you, it's what you grew up with. Have you uh, have you sent Lloyd Kaufman a copy of the the movie? Yet? I have not. I was gonna do it at a convention, but I'm afraid that he'll 
hard sell me up to like six more DVDs I already own when I give him my copy. <laughs> so we did that signing last Saturday. A lot of horror show listeners showed up. Yep. Um, now that was at an FYE. Now I, I thought they were nationwide, but apparently they're only in certain regions. But FYE is oh. you know it's it's a it's a big media store. You go there, right. you buy movies, you buy music. Mike, as a kid, you shopped in that store. Absolutely. Well, so it's a funny story. I shopped in that that geographic store. It was not FYE at the time. It yeah. used to be called Camelot Music. Right. Um, then they switched to FYE, and I absolutely did shop there a lot. But the signing was originally to take place at Suncoast, which was the video yeah. store on the other side of the mall that I grew up. Like I lived in that store up until store like two years ago. Fucking awesome. And yeah. so Vicky, the manager... When they went out of business, well, they didn't go out of business. The mall didn't renew their lease because they wanted a new high-end shoe store because they're trying to tr- convert Park City into like uh, a King of Prussia type deal. So they they pushed them out. But she had said to me the last day of Suncoast, she actually got teary-eyed. She's like, "I was going to set up a signing for you for White Doomsday because you've been shopping here since you were a kid, and I, I've known her forever." So then she moved to Fye, which is the same company, and. She fucking set it up there, which is awesome. So it's it's so what, really cool. what was that the moment more so than the film festivals or or the kind words from people or uh, meeting with Don Coscarelli last month? Was that the moment signing in that store? Was that when it all came true for you? Like holy shit, I did this. Yeah, it was a weird feeling because I, I I was so like amped up on adrenaline and stress because I I had actually hosted a film festival the night before till 5 a.m. So I was pretty delirious by the time I got into FYE, but it was a very strange thing to come in and see tables set up and then all of the staff like coming, what do you need, Mike? You know, they handed me markers and all these things and I see the post, our poster hanging on the wall behind us with, you know, FYE presents White Team's Day, meet the cast and crew. I was like, "Oh my god, what the hell is You were is this? on the whole time. Did you take a moment and stop and just enjoy it or were you just on?" Um, I was pretty much just on. Yeah. I had to be. I mean, there's a lot of people. There were. It was a it big was, crowd and it, early too. Oh, yes, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. we started an hour early. <laughs> we, you know? we well, yeah, we had to sign um 440 Blu-ray sleeves and posters and VHS covers for the distributor and I called everybody and told them to show up early so we could get all that done. Before the actual signing started, so <laughs> as soon as stuff got on the table, people were like, "Oh, that's," and then everyone just flooded in. Right. So in the midst of trying to organize who's signing what, we had regular people, and it was a. Uh, that's it excellent. was it was cool, but damn, was it stressful. I yeah, I I, I, ha- I was at the kids' table. It was me and Reeve. <laughs> And Dungeon Master. Dungeon Master got to sign a book. He got to sign a copy of he School's was so Out. Excited. I saw that. That was awesome. He was so, so torn because his, his mother and Mary and I, you know, we, we've we raised him to don't tell people, you know, don't right. tell daddy's fans right. your name. It's, you know, your Dungeon Master. We yeah. protect your privacy. But he's old enough now. We said, you know what? If he's going to if he's gonna go to one of these, it ought to be Mike's <laughs> right. movie debut. Yeah. So... Yeah, uh, somebody asked him to sign uh, Schools Out, and he got all shy because he wasn't sure if he should sign it as Dungeon Master or use his real name. And I said, you can use your real name. And uh, he was like, really? <laughs> and, uh, I, 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 I told the reader, I'm like, just don't burn me. Don't put a picture of this online. He's like, oh, I won't. But but yeah, Dungeon Master was tickled by that. But he was, oh, he he was more it, yeah. tickled. Just he was very proud of his uncle Mike. He was. And, uh, I was very proud of him signing that book. That was very cool to watch. But I, I think I think you and I both learned something, Mike, at that signing, and that is that if if two of your signers are ten years old, they're good for about an hour, and then they're done. They're fucking done. <laughs> I, I'll they say. Were actually very, you know, I'll very say, man. Uh, after you left, I thought Reeve was going to go too. He came back because Pam showed up, his yeah. mom, and they and he sat and he signed another Good. 30, 40, and he was Good. he was there till I long. At, we he, they were uh, still at the mall when we were leaving. He was <clears throat> before she got there. Um, I I guess his dad was shopping or something, but and he was he kept Brian. How much longer do we? <laughs> how much longer do we have? So. Uh, I, yeah, his dad went and got him a Cinnabon, and I said, why don't, why don't we go back here and take a break, and you can eat, and Dungeon Master can interview you. In fact, Dave, you got that interview queued up. Let's listen to that. Hello, folks. This is Dungeon Master. I'm um, sorry if I 
have a sore throat. I kind of have a raspy voice, but here I am with um Reeve, and I'm sorry, I forgot your last name. I'm just, Blasey. Blasey. Um, Reeve Blasey of White Doomsday, and um, I'm going to be interviewing him today. So, my first question for you, Reeve, is what was it like being in the movie? Um, it was like... I was, like, nervous most of the time. Um, because I wasn't really familiar with it. Like, I was, like, had, like, a script. Like, I couldn't just say what I wanted. I had to say what they told me to say. Well, how long did it take you to memorize the script? Um, depending on the scene. Most of the scenes weren't that long, but most of them were. Um... It took me a couple of takes. I remember in one of the scenes, I flipped. I was saying, I was talking to my mom in the movie, and I told her that Santa was here, but in one of the takes, I accidentally flipped it around, and I said, and I told Santa that mom was here, so I kind of, it was like the first take, so. Well, yeah, well, Hey, at least you can take another take. That's the magic of movies. Yeah. Well, did um the movie have any like effect other like effects on like did for school like? Um it, yeah, cause I couldn't cut my hair, cause it had to seem like it was like in like the bomb shelter, so I couldn't really cut my hair or. Um, and my parents actually had to explain to my teacher that I was in a movie because every day I'd come in with, like, some of the makeup under my nails and stuff and on my face, even though I did shower. Uh, Wow. Did your, what did your teacher say about that? I actually don't know, but I'm pretty sure he would have. I'm pretty sure he laughed a little bit. Well, hmm. Well, what else was it, like, it, aside from, like, lines, what, like, what was it like being on camera? Was this your first time, or? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, um, my dad was also in some movies, so, when I was young, he used to show me them, so, I kind of got the base, basics. Hmm. Wait, you do Boy Scouts? Yeah. Oh, that was really cool. I do Boy Scouts too. Um, hear that he does. You so you do, so you do that. Um, do you have like any like what did you do during the movie? Like, well, like, what do you think about like the other actors? Like, well, how was it interact? How was it interacting with the other actors? They were all really nice. Um, me and my mom, we used. Ev- between every cut, my mom in the movie, she played it. She played my mom. Um, we played a game, and between the cuts, and like we had lunch, and we played it after we ate lunch in between takes and stuff. Hmm. What was this game? Dragon Vale, I think. We, like bred dragons, fed them, and stuff. Oh yeah, I think I've heard of that. Maybe I think. Um, did you get um, any um, badges for Boy Scouts, or? I think so. In my area that I go to, I go to Pack Four Two Six. Um, we have like these little pins, and there's like a number on them, and that's how many years you've been in it. And uh, I think two years ago. I couldn't go to the like the blue and gold ceremony that we had um, because it was my aunt's wedding, um, so I missed it. And then just last Wednesday, Wednesday when I had my last meeting, I got them. Well, um, I have also had some expertise in movie making. I mean, um, me and my scout troop we made a movie too about um, like one of my friends. He got bit by, we pretended he got bit by a werewolf, and he 
and the only way to reverse it was to recite the Scout Oath. And then we had like a, it was a lot of fun doing that. And um, well, that aside, hmm, did you have fun making the movie? Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was fun talking with the actors between takes. It was fun doing it. Um, the only time I really didn't have fun was when it was like one of the days and we had to do like so many takes like then we had to do so many more takes than we were had like than we were supposed to we did like 10 and of course me being in second grade at the time i had to go to bed pretty early and it was a 30 minute drive home so it was like nine o'clock by the time we finished and i had school the next day and i think it was like a tuesday that we did it so it was still the middle of the week uh, um do you, did this like affect like did you miss any days of school i don't think so i think i got i did school i got home i did my homework like immediately because i had to go there around six five or six and then i had to do be there for about two to three hours mm -hmm. and we had dinner we had like dinner, we had pizza or Chinese food most of the days. Mm. Um, I don't think I missed any days of production though. Okay. What was it like you s seeing some of the special effects on the set? Mm. It was really hard to not look directly at the camera in some parts because I remember we had like a little cart and for one of the scenes, the camera was on it, and the person behind the camera had to like move it along like the, like it was kind of like a train. There was like a little thing and they had to move the camera around like the thing. Um, another time they had like a huge camera and they were just following me around the room. And it was like weird because it was like hard not to look directly at it because you couldn't or we'd have to redo it. But it was just like, they, it was like a huge camera lens just following me around. Really? It was it about on um, like this big? Yeah, probably. Um, did, have you ever gotten any other interviews besides this one for the movie? Yeah, I did one with my actual mom and my movie mom. And we watched the movie and we talked about it. And I think that's the only other one I've done besides this one. Hmm. All right, well, um, do you have anything else you want to say about the movie or is that it? No, I don't think there is anything else to say. All right. Were you excited about the signing today? Yeah. It was a lot of hard work. We had to sign 400 things. Um, but once we got through, it's just a lot of fun. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Another um, another episode of The Brian Keene Show. Um, now, if you excuse me, I, um, I think I tie my dad up in the closet, so I got to go and tie him. Oh, be quiet. Okay, so there you have it. And now you know everything they think about you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing that one. <laughs> so, have you thought about what comes next? I mean, you, you've done it. Here's your, your feature-length film. Real distributorship. Um, it's not a short. Yeah. You know, you, you cleaned up on the awards. Yeah, it's weird. Like it was really wild at the signing to see all the local people that. Uh, I mean, there there was a, a gal uh, who I went to. I went. To, she was in my math class in tenth grade, and she walked in, and she's like, "Do you remember me?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you sat next to me in math class." And she like hugged me, and I'm like, "How the fuck do you know about any of this?" <laughs> not. I mean, not not not. I'm not you know, nothing against her. Like she's a complete sweetheart, but I'm like, where have it's been like fourteen years? Like what the hell? 
So it was really wild. Like some of the people that showed up, I had customers from the pizza shop. I had, you know, friends that I haven't seen in years. I had family members come in. But um, you, you do realize it's bigger than that, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a local setting. You could do this signing at Dark Delicacies in L.A. You'd have the same kind of turnout. Uh, I mean, I hope. That would be great. I'd you love would. to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just as well. The movie has been received so well. And uh, I mean, of course, aside from the one-star review we just got like two weeks ago. But, you know, that there's going to be a plethora oh, yeah, more of those. Yeah, that was, that great, was Nicholas yeah. Pichon, though, wasn't it? It was too articulate to be Nicholas Pichon. <laughs> but I will say, I was... I was delighted by it though i read it out loud to everybody because i was called despicable i was like <laughs> wow and i was also told i should be ashamed of myself to call myself a filmmaker and a director so that was really nice wow and it wasn't the worst horror film he's ever seen what it was, was the, worst, the worst it was the worst film he's ever seen wow yeah <laughs> wow there was only three reviews Jeez. that this man has written one was for the amy schumer opus i feel pretty the other was for Baby Driver, and I can't remember what the fourth was, but the guy's been an IMDb member for 10 years. This huh. movie annoyed him that badly that he felt the need to, you know to review it. Wow. I was like very that. proud. I yeah. like that shit. Yeah. yeah. I was very proud. Yeah. You should almost put that on the front of the box if you do it. Honestly, if it, printing it, up. From <laughs> there, was, Michael there, was, there was a couple blurbs that I wish we could have included. My favorite, of course, was the... Uh, morbidly beautiful uh, review that it was a one sentence review they gave us after Nightmares our world premiere it just said the anti feel good movie of the year <laughs> <laughs> and that that came damn close to making it to the cover but I, I opted for another one so nice. did, after other than that review I mean this has been a wildly successful year mm -hmm. do you do you find yourself second guessing what, what happens next or do you have a game plan um, I mean, I, I kind of know what I want to do. I have another feature uh, called Masterwork, which I think I might change the title to Passion Project. Um, but I would like to do that. I also am considering doing a short film because I'd like to make something that won't take four years of my life. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, really, the rollout of this Blu-ray, I've got a lot more work to do, which is something that people don't understand that once it's actually all done, you know, we finished the movie, then it was festivals. And then we got distribution, and then it was six months of getting the deliverables. And now the movie's out. Now I got to sell the damn thing. So I'm not. I still have the shackles of Doomsday on me for a little while longer. Right. But I'm planning. I'm plotting. Do you worry that? I mean, you know, there's there's quite a bit of buzz, not only about this movie, but about you. Do you worry that if it takes you four years to make Masterwork, aka Passion Play, that people are going to forget it? That you're gonna you're gonna fall out of the um, public consciousness? I mean, it's definitely a concern, but, I mean, realistically, I'm making movies on weekends, so there's not much I can do about it. If it takes four years, right. it takes four years. I mean, most people that are far saner and intelligent than I would have quit this movie a long time ago, <laughs> uh, so I'm nothing if not tenacious. Um, but, I mean, I've got plans to try to expedite the process. Like, I'd like to work on the next movie semi-full-time. Um you know, with an actual budget would be nice too. So, you know, hopefully it won't take four years, but you know, I'm going to write the script sometime in the next few months and we'll see what, what happens with all that. But I mean, really when it comes down to it, I think if people are a fan of something, they'll, they'll seek it out, you oh, know, yeah. they'll find it eventually. I mean, I'll always be the guy that made white doomsday for better or worse. So, you know, when we do the next movie, I made a lot of connections with film festivals and, uh, and fans, I mean, if you look at, like, Suburban Holocaust, the first real Splatter DVD, people that bought Doomsday were ta telling me how much they loved Suburban Holocaust, and that shit was 10 years old. Yeah. You yeah. know, people are still talking to you about The Rising. Like, you know, if something connects with somebody, they'll remember it. Or they Absolutely. won't. Absolutely. And, you know, I can't really change that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. All right, you guys got anything from Mike before we uh, before we wrap the show up this week? I think, I think you covered it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Just that we're, we're excited for you. We're proud yeah. of you. And no, I, yeah. I told him that day I was super proud of him. And I said, this has to be one of the coolest things you've ever done in your life. Yeah. Because he signed, you know. And he didn't DVDs even have to and... pee on anyone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't. Although I almost peed a little when Chet Williamson. I'm not sure oh, you guys are yes. aware. Yes. We do yes. need to talk he, uh, about that. Yes. The, the writer of Music of the Spears, the uh, Alien comic book. I'm not yep. sure if you guys are familiar. <laughs> um, really? He walked in and uh, bought a copy of White Doomsday. 
And uh, no that was, yeah, Seriously? that was that very, was very awesome. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Chet was at the uh, local premiere in Lancaster, and he had come up to me afterwards and said how much he enjoyed it, and then told me that if I ever want to cast him, he'd be very willing to be in a movie. And of course, oh, you know, yeah. Chet's a very nice man, so I'm just like, that's very sweet of you to lie to me. Thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> very sweet of you to lie to me. You know, I get that a lot. People are like, oh, that was so awesome. Blah, blah. Well, I'll, I'll believe it when there's a 20 in your hand and you're picking up the Blu-ray. Well, he did. Oh. <laughs> and, and folks at home, under, understand, this is like the equivalent of, of Richard Lehman asking right. him to sign his copy of The Rise. Right. I mean, Chet wrote Mike's favorite Aliens comic of all time. Um, Mike didn't figure that. Mike knew Chet for years. And Jesus and I knew Mike's thoughts on that comic. And we we wanted to save Chet from the extreme <laughs> fanboys. Mike didn't figure it out until my, fi- I guess it was my 50th birthday party. I think it was your 50th um, birthday party. And, and Mike cornered him in here in my laundry room. <laughs> as Mike- I as I oft do. <laughs> <laughs> in the laundry room. Yeah, this will happen. But no, Chet, Chet I believe I, I could speak for Chet. I, I think he was super touched yeah. that, that his comic had that impact on you. And that and was, yeah. how how old was that comic? That's... Hell, that was I was out of the navy. I was maybe in my late twenties, very it was early, very 30s, early nineties, so, I believe. Yeah. yeah, so I was in my and late twenties then. So some weirdo like me has fixated on that and had <laughs> talks to him about that in two thousand like sixteen. So there you go. I think things will endure. Yeah. Yes. So you got that going for you, Chet. (laughs) When I had just finished reading The Night Listener, his collection, which was fucking phenomenal, Jeff Gonzalez had recommended The Confessions of St. Thomas to me years ago, and that was the first book I saw reprinted in that was available. So I bought that and had just finished reading that, and I had messaged Chet a couple months ago and said how much I I dug it, especially the one story that takes place in East Petersburg, which is uh, a town that I'm familiar with. Um (laughs) And uh, he said to me at the signing, he's like, you know, those stories are all available for option very cheaply for you. And he, like, gave me a look, and I was like, wow, okay. Aww. That's nice. So, cool. okay, knowing that, you said, you know, maybe you're going to do a short in between this and Passion Play. Could project. You, could, yeah, or Passion Project. Could you do one of those? Um, I don't know. I didn't really read them with the intent of adapting them. So I actually, I read them as an audience, which is something I can't very often do these days. Right. Um, but I mean, it's theoretically possible. I'm not sure what exactly I would do with it, but you know, I've got, I have like seven short films that I've been trying to get off the ground for like a decade. So right. chances are it's going to be one of those if I do it, but my short films have a tendency of exponentially growing until they accidentally become features. <laughs> So, if <laughs> history has proven anything, I don't know that well, yeah. making a short's going to work. Yeah, Matt, White Doomsday was supposed to be a short film. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mike calls me one night. He says, um, I think I accidentally filmed a feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, though. Man. That was like, actually, that was originally going to be the title of the behind-the-scenes documentary was the time <laughs> we accidentally made a feature. Yeah. <laughs> we opted for Armageddon from the cheap seats the making of White Doomsday. <laughs> All right. Um, well, one more time, uh, Mike. First of all, you know, thanks for taking time away from the horror syndicate. To- oh, that's right. <laughs> I actually have two other podcast. podcasts to do today. Two other podcasts. Yes. Wow. Look at him. Remember when? Guy. Remember when he had time for us? <laughs> 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 this week's show once again was brought to you by artist Chris Enterline. Uh, if you're looking for handcrafted art for your next project be it a cover for your novel paintings for tabletop game you're designing illustrations for the comic book you want to write whatever he's got you covered he will work with you uh work out a price for you his work has been featured in clickers forever a tribute to jf gonzalez he's also done work for thunderstorm books adam cesare you may know him as adam caesar but i'm going to pronounce his name correctly adam cesare uh john Bowden and patrick lacy Uh, He even worked on Mike Lombardo's I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday, designed an alternate movie poster for that. He gets around. (laughs) That's what I've heard. Like herpes. I met him in a a laundry room. It was... (laughs) (laughs) Hey, did y'all hear about the herpes monkeys in Florida? No. Why? No. Okay, well... It's a terrible name for the elderly, Brian. As you know, (laughs) Florida... Florida is besieged with pythons. Yes. And you guys know that Coop and I, our dream is to take two weeks and get licenses and go python hunting in the Florida Everglades. 
Okay, no, 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 wait. Well, you got is... you got to get an out of state hunting license to no, do but it. Why is this a dream? What, what... Because because I loathe snakes. He loathes snakes the way Indiana Jones. And if loves I snakes. if I could fucking shoot a twenty foot python, that would give me an erection the size of I Lombardo's just, so ego. So they will actually yeah. give you a license and you can shoot snakes. Uh, I I think, notice, I, notice that that this erection trip he's taking Coop with him and not me. <laughs> well, I, I thought when you hunted snakes, like I've got a to joke to go with that. Them. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unclear. Okay, they they are now they it was catch the pythons See, that's and that's not working. Right. Oh. So now they're letting people euthanize pythons. And the the latest hunting article I was I was reading. And, and keep in mind, I'm not a hunter. It's not like right. I go out and go shoot a deer. Yeah. Um, but I will shoot a fucking snake. Sure. Um, How are they playing with pythons? Like what? Oh. Because people were letting um, and... they were letting pets go. But there's there's a kind of snake that's in, uh, indigenous to that area, which is incredibly aggressive. Mm -hmm. And the kind of snakes that they were letting back into the wild are incredibly large for snakes. So now you have large aggressive snakes. Exactly, and they started foot mating. Aggressive yeah. snakes. And they and the, the offspring and they... are these aggressive, huge snakes that are just taking over because. There's no predators. Yeah, they've they've completely to get, to get them. they've destroyed oh. the Everglades, and now they're starting. They're finding them as far afield as South Carolina, which oh, means shit. they're adapting Whoa. to temperature, etc. Mm. Get anyway. ice, get Ice Cube on the phone. I think we've got. <laughs> I think right? we've got a franchise. <laughs> but that's the thing. That was yesterday's news. Now, oh now the problem in Florida, there was a research lab that had monkeys with herpes, and the monkeys with herpes got loose into the Everglades too. My God, the Everglades is like a like a so we've a, got a well, it, it comes of, back to Stan Lee. Remember the Man Thing comics? Yes, you know, the, sure. the Everglades. There was always all this weird shit yes. in the Florida yeah. Everglades. Now there it's, really now is now weird actually. shit in the Florida Everglades. So oh, so Everglades. we've got like a twenty eight days later laboratory experimenting on monkey. How do you give monkeys herpes? For one, is the real question. And then two, like. So these monkeys, are they transmitting it to people? Like, what, do they join a frat? And now they're, like, spreading it everywhere at parties? Or, like, what's going on? I was going to say, we have two different movies going on here. We need to get Ice Cube and Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> yeah. Outbreak and Anaconda's Yeah, it's a on. crossover. <laughs> I'm sick of these, these motherfucking herpetic snakes <laughs> on this motherfucking <laughs> In this trailer and park. The, the snakes and the monkeys are breathing, so now we've got all kinds of weird stuff Herbicon going on. Could it be, could it, could it, it's going could it be called uh, Death Sore? Death Sore? <laughs> if you would like Chris and Line to draw sword. you a herpes infected monkey fighting a giant snake, email him. <laughs> Drop him an email, chrisenterline at gmail.com. Uh, that's Chris, C-H-R-I-S, enterline, E-N-T-E-R-L-I-N-E, gmail.com. I'm just going to laugh if he gets these kind of emails oh. asking for this shit. He's going to be lucky to only get something that weird. I'm it'll telling be, you right now. It'll be Brian Keene peeing yeah. on giant pythons and, and yeah. herpes-ridden monkeys. It's like, Brian, thanks for all the extra work, but yeah. what the fuck, <laughs> man? <laughs> Matt Wilson's new book, Edge of Twilight. Yes. Are there herpes monkeys in that? There is not. No. There is not. Uh, available right now at lulu.com. Keep in mind, uh, January. How many more original shows do we have left here, Dave? After Where's this week, count? two. So only two more original yeah. shows mm -hmm. for this year. But when we come back in January, uh, our first book club pick will be Ritualistic Human Sacrifice by C.V. Hunt. Uh, so buy it now. Read along with us. Um, next week, we're either going to have John Goodridge or Scott Baker. I haven't decided which yet. Um, and in the meantime, if you enjoyed this nonsense, you may enjoy <laughs> Mary's side podcast. That's Cosmic Shenanigans. Each week, she talks about Cosmic Car. This week, you're talking about John Carpenter's The Thing, correct? I am. I am. Um, you may enjoy uh, Matt's side podcast, The Grindcast. Yeah. Uh, where they act like idiots and talk about video games for an hour. Uh, you you yeah. may enjoy Dave's Twitch stream. He's at twitch.tv slash Meteor Notes. You might enjoy Christopher Golden and I on Defenders Dialogue. Or uh, what's that What's that little project you have, Lombardo? Horror, horror what? Horror Syndicate? Are you talking about Real Splatter Productions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, we're talking about podcasts. No, oh. hey, for the guys at Heart sure. Syndicate, I, I fucking love you guys. I love your show. I'm just teasing because I like to break Lombardo's balls. <laughs> I, I feel like I should be on the record about that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the Heart Syndicate lives on Friday nights on Facebook Live. No. On Facebook Live, mm -hmm. not YouTube Live. No, it's on YouTube Live as well. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. We we should look into doing that, Dave. But we're old. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's another it's another place for people to stumble across it. It's you know. Yeah. All right, stumble across us next week, folks. Bye. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh wait! So, uh, so no buy. Can... Oh no buy. So uh, two things, real, two things, real quick to wrap this up. Um, one, it's known that pythons swallow their prey whole, so I think there's going to be some herpes infected snakes pretty soon if they've got those monkeys uh, running around. And they <laughs> this, just, they... this is really a troubling thought. It really is. I just started thinking about the uh, the fanfic that's going to come out of this. Episode. Oh my god! Imagine <laughs> this fucking you, you, you're in Coop and I are in the swamps hunting a snake. And this big giant twenty foot motherfucker with its mouth hanging open and the fangs, and then there's a herpes cold sore in the corner of the mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, with all these snakes coming to the area, they got to make a living, right? So <laughs> he's got herpes. It's a cold sore. Snakes. <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> what was the other thing you wanted to mention? Yeah, uh, no, yeah. No, I can't <laughs> wait to Sorry, I just wanted to, I just wanted to help facilitate that image in people's heads. And also, you can buy the I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday Blu-ray DVD combo and VHS at ScreamTeamReleasing.com. Oh yeah, how oh, yeah. the hell did we forget to yeah, mention we forgot that? Forgot to plug it. Oops. <laughs> Oops. We're well, talking about well, Python. Well. Sorry, if, uh, <laughs> syphilis and peeing and. <laughs> Peas, syphilis, monkey, peas, pythons, I don't know. By the time this episode airs, the copies should be shipping. There's signed copies available on the site. We sold out of the limited edition in like 24 hours, um, but the other copies are still available. I believe we're on Amazon now, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe oh, so. Good. Yep. Um, so, yeah, check it out, guys, and uh, leave a review on IMDb or Amazon. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, since we're giving plugs, um, not sure yet of a date, but we're going to do this. But uh, somebody recently posted online a drinking game that you drink while you're watching one of these god off a Hallmark Channel Christmas movies. Oh, God. Oh, God. And if you look at the drinking game, there's no way that you will live if you do this doing one of these movies. So, of course, Phoebe and I are going to do this. So, some Saturday <laughs> night, I don't know when, we're going to do this and live tweet the results. We can't do it on Twitch because we'll get arrested yeah. um, because of the drinking. But we're seriously going to play this drinking game. We're going to die. So if you want to hear us die live on Twitter, just pay, I'll, I'll announce it ahead of time. Man, Make sure to follow me on Twitch. Yeah. yeah. I, it, I was... It's all stuff like the, every time you hear like a Christmas carol you have to drink. Yep. Every time there's a tree. It's just, Dave, it, don't. No, seriously. No, Brian already... doesn't know how to use that machine. Every now. time. <laughs> at least teach me how to use <laughs> The soundboard. <laughs> Just dump some West Virginia pee all over it. <laughs> <laughs> And hire a syphilitic monkey, and you'll be good to go. I was oh, I was just man. watching some Hallmark Christmas movies at my mom's house. I was helping her move some furniture, and the Hallmark Channel was on. It was a marathon. If you took a shot every time someone's high school sweetheart came back to town <laughs> while you're on the tail end of a divorce and it's Christmas time, I'd die of alcohol poisoning oh, yeah. within like, two hours. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the other one is that's a, the sweet spot. That's a dead you... relative, because they're one of the people. I think was mm-hmm. the oh, relative yes. who died. Yes. And the town's always named after Christmas. The characters are all named after Christmas. It's it's amazing. I, so. it's, I have to add all this to the show. It is so yeah. inc- herpes incredibly... monkeys and Hallmark Channel drinking games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So here's my question though. People people are, are are talking about this this herpes monkeys news story. Unless you're having sex with monkeys in the Everglades. I'm not sure why this would necessarily be a problem. Have you been to the Everglades? There's not a whole lot to do. So. <laughs> well, that's why I was saying about the pythons, like, you know, deep right. throating these monkeys. I'm like, are they, like, what? That, what's the cross species? I mean, like, should the snakes they swallow, be yeah, I mean, they swallow their prey whole. Like I'm saying, I'm going to be making sorry. some extra money. <laughs> I feel sorry for two groups of listeners. <laughs> Those were the ears. <laughs> first of all, I, I feel sorry for like Reeves elementary school teacher. Oh God. And Dungeon Masters elementary school teacher, both of whom tuned in. Just to, oh, just to hear. To hear, to hear. <laughs> and, and instead got this. And I, I feel sorry for the people who we, we know we have them in the audience who always hit stop during the final ad read because they think there's nothing else. Oh yeah. Yeah. You would think by now they would have learned it. Yeah, this is like your Marvel after credits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's like a Marvel movie. You don't leave Hey, Stanley has told you people don't leave before the credits are over. So it's the same thing here. That's right. You need to listen to all this. I want to know how the syphilitic monkeys and the snakes and all that affect that guy who was trying to start a gator based economy where he was trying to trade a gator for beer. What? Yeah, in Florida. There was a guy outside of the What the fuck is going on in Florida? 
Kick there was a saw that damn state off and let it there's, <laughs> away. There's a guy. Have you ever <laughs> seen Alligator 2 the Mutation? Yes, I think I that this is how it starts. There was oh, a guy fuck. outside a convenience store who had a gator and he was trying to trade it to people as they were going out of the store for a six pack. So he's he's way ahead of the game here for because when the apocalypse comes, the gator based economy is what we're going to so be using. So one gator course, is worth a six pack. I, apparently, was well, it good beer? I, I, well, like, it's Florida, so it ain't going to be good beer. So it's That's, like Keystone. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but Schlitz. Schlitz. So you, what's what's the exchange rate on on snakes versus gators and and monkeys? You know, there's That's he's got to he's got to work this out. Yeah, this is important. Well, I thinking. think that if this man can monetize the snakes and the monkeys in like a you know kind of a side like prostitution ring i think that's when you're really gonna make some money <laughs> and then you know when they get to when they get to the monkeys get too old to you know service the clients they feed them to the gators to keep them alive but then then do the gators get herpes i don't know if you can get if you can get Everyone herpes from eating herpes. from eating the, <laughs> if you eat the flesh of something herpes, with herpes snake hunting. is herpes no, no, is not. is herpes transmittable through like eating i don't like, if you cook the flesh and then eat it, will you still get herpes? These are questions we need to find out next time. The, these are burning, que- burning hot. See what I did there? These are important questions. Who, whose birthday comes up next? Me or Coops? Coops, right? Coops. All right, yeah. well, this I, I'm calling it right now. This is what I want for Coops' birthday. Herpes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want everybody to chip in and pay to send Coop and I to the Everglades for a week. <laughs> Well, no. wear protection, Brian. You never know what you're going to find out in the wild. Just go with one of those, uh, that those naked giant gun. Body, like giant yeah, gun. naked gun. <laughs> you sitting there trying to pick well, your gun up like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... I, 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 I've I'm never. Sure I'm on board for this plan here. Well, if this is anything like the commercials for like um, Valtrex, like I imagine these monkeys are horseback riding, oh, yes, and, you know, yes. swimming, going to the ocean, yeah. you know, sailboating. Climbing, like, yeah, you know, John Urban take life. us from Florida. We could fly him back from Spain, oh and, and he could chaperone us, and then you'd be okay with it. He right? could be no, your guide. Absolutely yeah. not. The last time I left you in John's care, you tried to buy a baby alligator from a roadside. He stand. wanted some from, beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted a baby. I wanted a a pet alligator that, if <laughs> that eventually got, you could trade for beer. Well, I could train them to do all kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. And this yeah, was this was ahead. after like he almost Bitcoin. stepped on a yeah. big one you know, while they were floor. out there looking for them. See, no, 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 no. Okay, now the show's officially in overtime. Matt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's exactly as I said it. I told Urban, we were at this this party. Yeah. Uh, the, the folks who run Camelot Books uh, through a, a real delightful party. We had a nice day hanging out with Edward Lee and Jeff Strand, and I had a few drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, it was all Dave Barnett's fault. Those drinks, by the way. But Naturally. on the way back to to uh, Urban Six, I said, "I want to see a goddamn alligator." We're in Florida. Well, let's stop in the swamp. So we're in the swamp, and we're walking around the swamp, and I'm taking pictures of the swamp because it's cool. Mm-hmm. But I don't see any alligators. And then uh, John's partner points out to me in the one picture she's like here you, you you got this ground shot and here's your toes at the bottom corner of the picture i'm like yeah see the log that your toes are almost stepping on i'm like yeah that's an alligator yeah they don't call them death logs like, for no, nothing it's not it's a log <laughs> so now mary's convinced that i almost stepped on an alligator but i well, i still think they, it was a then log they texted me and said that brian was in a firefight with a with an alligator a well that part was true but that was later <laughs> That fucking alligator was hitting on his monkey. (laughs) (laughs) And the alligator tried to give me herpes. What did you expect me to do? Why there and take it? (laughs) How how is Edward Lee is also in Florida? Has he has he heard of this news story? Is there a new book series coming out? (laughs) No, but you want you want a little horror show exclusive? (laughs) Edward Lee and I are working on a collaboration. Oh really? Yes. Wow, that's cool. Yes. Uh, you, you you all are very young, but but by y'all I mean Matt and Mike but yeah. Mary uh, Dave <laughs> you're familiar with so not getting laid I'm sorry go on I would have thought the herpes monkeys would have taken care of that <laughs> you're familiar with William Hope Hodgson's Karnacki the ghost finder yes Lee and I uh, you know because Karnacki's public domain so Lee and I are going to do uh, Karnacki in the case of the haunted dildo <laughs> of course you are of course you are <laughs> And I think we already gave you now this this conversation for the last half an hour, like five more plot ideas. <laughs> I think herpes monkeys will have to play a play a role. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So this haunted yeah. dildo that you hear like the ghostly moans emitting from it, or we're not sure yet. We were we were in a bar back in what was it August, late August. The two of us were in a bar and we were talking about Karnacki and how 
how young people don't know who Karnacki is. And then we'd had a few drinks and we said, well, fuck it. We'll do Karnacki. But we'll have to make it an Edward Lee Brian Keene joint. So, so somewhere along the line, the idea of a haunted dildo came up. and <laughs> That's not ectoplasm. <laughs> it's pecker snot. Pecker snot. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 In a world where podcasts lurk around every corner. Listen, we just have to give the people what they want. Get it together. Authors Tim Meyer and Chad Scanlon invite you to an hour of sophisticated conversation. I just want to rip your head off for even saying that. Dude, I am just saying what you're thinking. From movies and TV to special guests, you name it, they've got it. I'd rather gouge my eyes out than watch that movie ever again. That's one of the finest movies of our generation. How are you both married? Join them every Wednesday exclusively from the Project Entertainment Network.